I'm Lynn Smith, and welcome to Bigfoot Case Files. Bigfoot Encounters from New England In March 1977, Royal Bennett and Shannon, his 14-year-old granddaughter, were watching deer from the back porch of his home on the west side of South Bay near Whitehall. When they trained their binoculars on an object several yards away in a clearing near Fish Hill Road, they noticed what appeared to be a stump. She stated that it stood up and walked away. It was golden in color and moved slowly. When it moved, it appeared to be a little slumped over and light tan in color on the main area of the body, Shannon continued. It was one o'clock in the afternoon when we noticed it. Because it was so far away, we couldn't see the face clearly. It was about seven to eight feet tall, with long arms that swung as it walked. It then crept into the woods near the clearing. Royal, an avid outdoorsman who feels at home in the woods, was certain they had witnessed something extraordinary. If it was a man, it was a big man, honey-colored. With binoculars, I could tell it weighed close to 500 pounds and stood close to 100 feet across the clearing. No bear could possibly travel that far on its hind legs, and the color seemed unsuitable for a bear. Kevin Meridian and David Holt, two pheasant hunters from Porter near Lewiston, discovered what appeared to be the body of a rotting Bigfoot in September 1978. The discovery generated a brief media frenzy and made headlines in tabloids. The Weekly World News declared, Bigfoot photos confound experts. Family of bizarre creatures may roam the wilds. While the skull disappeared, possibly by wild animals, Officer Felicity photographed it in great resolution. Despite media frenzy regarding the discovery of a dead Bigfoot, which appeared even in mainstream media, when press photographs of the monster were sent to two mammal experts, they both came to the same conclusion. According to Dr. Sidney Anderson of the American Museum of Natural History in New York City and Dr. Richard W. Thorrington, Jr., a mammal expert at the Smithsonian Institution, the animal in the photos was a black bear. The hunters who discovered it may have concluded it was Bigfoot because of the numerous accounts of Bigfoot sightings in the Lewiston area throughout the years. One hot spot is the Tuscarora Indian Reservation, where Chief Frank Wasco claims his people had heard legends about such a creature for years. After speaking with two unknown Saratoga County Sheriff's deputies, Investigator Bill Brand learned of an unusual incident from the late 1970s. One summer evening, the first deputy was called to a reported disturbance and noticed numerous people loitering around a house as he pulled in. When he asked what was going on, they told him that something was yelling loudly behind a mobile home, then yanking up a tree and throwing it at the trailer. The cop went around the back. The 10-inch diameter tree was leaning against the trailer. He then came across vegetation that had been matted down by something enormous and powerful. He advised them to keep their doors and windows shut. Kinderhook and its environs, located 15 miles south of Albany, have been the site of numerous sightings of the Kinderhook creature, as it has been dubbed by locals. Because it is located in a rural region of the Hudson Valley in northern Columbia County, the place has a reputation for strange happenings. Since the late 1970s, a series of encounters with a gigantic, hairy man-beast have been documented. Martha Hallenbeck, a 72-year-old Kinderhook grandmother, observed a big black hairy monster all curled up in her yard in December 1978. Later, she discovered enormous human-like footprints in the snow. For fear of being called mad, she kept the occurrence to herself. The monster was tall and had long hair, according to her description. A witness claimed to have seen a young Bigfoot while hiking in Hamilton County on a July morning in 1979. While separated from the other hikers, he heard rustling in the thick undergrowth and wandered off the main trail to check a beaver colony. I heard thump, thump, thump of feet pounding on the ground and then heard wailing like a woman. The creature then came partially into view and it stood around four and a half feet tall. It was covered in dark brown fur with lighter tips and moved fast upright. On the afternoon of December 5, 1979, Barry Knights, 14, was trapping on Cushing's Hill in Kinderhook 
when he spotted four gigantic furry animals walking on two legs and crossing a brook. They had light brown fur and made clacking or grunting sounds, according to him. Martha Hollenbeck recounts the story. My grandson Barry said he saw four gigantic, large animals crossing the creek and walking into the woods down there. And I'm sure he saw something, because I hadn't said I'd seen anything before. Then I told everyone that I'd seen the tracks. Knights was so terrified by the experience that he spent part of the day carrying a baseball bat for protection. Bruce Hallenbeck, an Albany radio personality and film producer, went to the area of his cousin's encounter the next day. Barry was still frightened by his experience and refused to follow Bruce, so he went with his other cousin, Russell. Despite finding nothing, Hollenbeck characterized the region around Cushing's Hill as another world. The haunted area is densely forested, covered with thick underbrush and pocked with bogs. In April 1980, a woman driving along Route 9 near Kinderhook noticed a seven and a half foot tall reddish brown monster that looked like a highly sophisticated ape. It allegedly traveled from a field to her left, across the road, and into a forested area to her right. That summer, a Connecticut man was camping in the harsh wilderness of Lawrenceburg, New York. Fred Renato, 34, claims he was awakened on June 4, 1980, by the howling of a koi dog or wolf. He sat up and looked around, but there was nothing there. Then something smashed through the undergrowth, startling him. It made a loud thud. I could hear it coming for a long time before I saw it, but suddenly I saw this white shape emerge from the shadows. It was walking quickly, yet it was breathing deeply, as if it had asthma or had run hard. It made large, powerful booms, quite loud, from 50 to 75 yards away. When the creature came into view, Renato was taken aback by its sheer size, saying, This thing was enormous. It was huge, white, and hairy. I was staring at it closely, and despite my inability to see anything clearly, I knew what it was. Anyway, I got into the truck, I rolled down the window and looked out, witnessing it go into the night. Then it was gone, and I never heard it again. He went to the spot several days later with the property owner and discovered tracks 15 inches long. Later, he told a reporter, I just assumed they'd leave him alone. I know I believe it. I don't really care if anyone else believes it. Martha Hallenbeck and numerous relatives reported sighting a mass of something outside Martha's backwoods home shortly after 11 p.m. on the bright cloudless full moon night of September 24, 1980. As they were dropping Martha off after an evening with the family, they heard terrible screaming in the woods near the house. Bruce Hallenbeck would later write in a letter, It screamed, moaned, and made guttural noises before my nephew grabbed his shotgun and fired into the air. It walked away on two legs, exactly like a person. Bruce's letter was submitted to popular Albany Times Union columnist Barney Fowler, who wrote about it and highlighted Bruce's call for more area residents to report similar experiences. The Post generated a rush of letters from neighbors with similar incidents, including three along Kinderhook Creek the previous year. Barry Knights and Russell Zbierski were going down a desolate road near Cushing's Hill on a November night in 1980. They were taken aback when they heard the sound of something massive moving in the trees on both sides of the road. Then, out of nowhere, Five giant animals with cone-shaped heads and no necks came onto the road ahead of them. A woman just down the road reported seeing a giant hairy monster walk on two legs and remove food from trash cans near her garage around the same time. Her dog became afraid and started spinning in circles, peeing on itself. A young woman was riding her bicycle on Novak Road in Kinderhook in early April 1981, near several previous sightings when she saw a large creature cross the road and flee into the cornfield. A towering figure with brilliant red eyes was seen by numerous campers near Cushing's Hill on the night of May 8th, almost a month later. They stated it walked on two legs, had no neck, and long arms. A family living in a remote part of Columbia County, south of Kinderhook, claimed to have seen a black, hairy Bigfoot one night in the summer of 1981. The incident happened on their peaceful property, which is located at the end of a dead-end road surrounded by woodlands, approximately 20 minutes from Kinderhook. If there are bear tracks, it's a large monster, the officer stated after showing a wildlife specialist from the State Department of Environmental Conservation the 16-inch long tracks. 
One night in November 1981, Bruce Hellenbeck's cousin, Cherry, was driving by her grandmother's driveway in Kinderhook when she observed a big two-legged thing, reddish-brown, that ran out of the woods. The creature fled when her headlights shone on it. Three months later, two Whitehall police officers were making their rounds on Route 22, half a mile north of East Bay, at the base of Lake Champlain, when they witnessed something incredible. The time was 4.30 a.m., and the date was early February. They were taken aback as a tall, hairy beast ambled over the road and up a steep embankment at the foot of the mountain. The incident occurred about 100 yards from the Washington County Highway Department garage. The cops kept their identities disguised for fear of being chastised. In 2005, one of the cops elected to go public. Danny Gordon is a well-known and long-term local. The monster had narrow shoulders, was lanky, stood between seven and a half and eight feet tall, and was covered in dirty, mangy, dark brown fur. Gordon was confident it wasn't a joke. There's no way in hell I could believe this was a man in a fur outfit, Gordon said, when asked if it could have been someone trying to terrify them. A more pressing question arises. Who would dress up in a monkey suit on stilts and dash in front of a police cruiser, knowing there were two armed cops inside? And how did it manage to climb the mountainside so easily? Gordon described it as looking like an ape with bad posture because it slouched. It took great strides, swinging its arms back and forth. The speed at which it went was remarkable, and he claimed that a relay runner would have difficulty keeping up with it. With his revolver out, Gordon jumped out of the car and began tracking the thing. Meanwhile, the second officer stated that he had no desire to leave the car and was content to observe the proceedings from a distance. Thanks for listening. I think you might find this video of interest as well. If you've had an encounter or sighting of a Sasquatch and would like your story told here, please email me, Lynn Smith, at bigfootcasefiles at mail.com. I'm looking forward to hearing from you.